Hello, everybody. This is Jennifer Schaus coming to you live from Washington, D.C., and thanks for joining us in our Webinar Wednesday series. We host webinars every Wednesday at 12 o'clock and 1230 Eastern Time covering various government contracting topics. Uh, the webinars are all complimentary. We do record them, and you'll find the recordings on our YouTube channel or on our website. Uh, the website has both the upcoming uh, webinars as well as all of the previously recorded webinars over the past let's say four or five years. Uh, in the interest of time, we do not take questions. So if you do have questions for our speaker today, his contact information will be found on the last slide. We'll include his phone number and his email address. Uh, a little bit about us. We provide professional services for federal contractors, both product and service and software companies. Customers are both domestic and foreign. And some of the services are listed here, which range from GSA schedules, down to contract administration, as well as business development, marketing, and more. You can find more about our services on our website under the Services tab. If you do want to advertise, uh, we do have opportunities for that in both our newsletter, which reaches about 15,000 subscribers, and in our webinars. If you've got questions or you want pricing information, please contact Mallory Flowers. Uh, her email address is shown there on the webinar. And we do have a sponsor for today's webinar, which is AccuTrack. They are a small woman-owned uh, 8A business providing services uh, that include DCAA audits, budget and forecasting, cost allocation, bookkeeping and reporting, payroll, uh, as well as accounting policies and systems. You can contact them at 586-840-6494 or visit their website at accutrack.biz. So let's uh, introduce our speaker, who is the talented Dr. Jamie Sokolow. Uh, his education and company are listed there, and he's obviously got many years of government contracting experience. And today he's going to be talking about organizing to win in federal grant proposals. So Jamie, thanks for sharing your time and your expertise with us. I'm going to turn the floor over to you now. Well, thank you very much, Jennifer. It's a pleasure and an honor to be giving a webinar with you and your colleagues. Today I'm going to be talking about how to organize and win in federal grant proposals. And I'm going to be oriented toward businesses rather than other types of organizations. And uh, I think organizing is important because often when people talk to me about proposals, they use the word writing. And even though there's a lot of writing that has to be done in proposals, I don't like to use the word writing. I like to use the word development because a proposal is a process. And if you don't have a good process to develop a proposal, you're not going to be successful. So writing isn't enough. It has to be part of something bigger. And I'm going to be explaining that today. First slide, please. Now, for those of you who are on the previous webinar, this may be repetitive, but for those of you who are new, I'd like to spend a couple of slides talking a little bit about federal grants. A federal grant is a contract. It's a monetary award that's given by a federal agency to some entity, a nonprofit organization, a business, or even state and local governments to carry out some sort of project. Every year, the federal government provides about $1 trillion in grants. However, the largest amount, over $700 billion, is earmarked basically for state and local governments. And it goes to such fields as education and health and transportation. <clears throat> the remainder, $300 billion, is available for a variety of organizations. Next slide, please. Most of that goes to state and local governments in the form of discretionary grants. Educational organizations, such as schools and colleges and universities, public housing organizations, nonprofit organizations that we usually call 501c3 organizations, and businesses. Even though most businesses 
are applying for government contracts in response to RFPs or requests for proposals, there are opportunities for grants for businesses. They exist in the National Institutes of Health. They also exist in a number of Department of Defense research programs. And there is a very wide ranging government program called the SBIR STTR program that involves a number of federal agencies. And so you need to uh, understand that these are opportunities that are actually for businesses as opposed to nonprofit organizations. Next slide, please. In order to get a grant, you need to understand the grant life cycle. There's usually a three stop or three step version in federal grants. Uh, first of all, you have a pre award phase where you have the announcement of the funding opportunity and then the receipt of applications for the deadline and the review of applications. <clears throat> and then after three or four months, perhaps, the government agency announces its award decisions and notifications. They may be announced by letter. They, be, they may involve negotiations with the uh, potential awardees. And then the third phase is the post-award phase where you have the implementation of your grant, where you carry out your activities, you do your reporting, and then at the end, you close out the grant, and the grant officially ends. <clears throat> Next slide, please. In order to do a really good grant proposal, you have to organize to win. In other words, you have to not write a proposal, but organize the development of a proposal. And so I would like to walk you through the steps I think you need to take in order to submit a really good grant proposal. This is based on my own experience, and it's also based on a lot of literature that's been written about doing successful grant proposals. Once you have identified your opportunity and identified the deadlines and decided that you're going to submit a grant proposal, I think your first step is to identify your team. It is very hard to do a proposal by yourself. You need a team to do it for all sorts of reasons. And so I strongly suggest that in the beginning, you identify your team, the people who are experts in the subject field, who also can help you put together your budget and who can sign the uh, MOU and agreements along with everything else. Next, uh, once you've identified your team and identified your partners and signed the agreements, you're ready to identify the resources that are needed. And those resources are things like desks and paper and computers and access to all sorts of information. So I strongly recommend that you uh, do that. Next, you need to do a SWOT analysis. A SWOT analysis, as you can see, is an analysis of your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and threats. 
you need to understand who you are, where you stand in this process, and how competitive you're likely to be. Uh, I'd like to interrupt for a moment and ask uh, Jennifer, since I'm having a little trouble with my computer, to confirm that I am being heard. Is that the case? Well, yeah, then let me... Hi, Jennifer. Are you able to hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure. Thank you. So in step four, you're going to do a SWOT analysis where you have a very candid review of who you are and what strengths and weaknesses you have. You need to do this in order to capitalize on your strengths, address your weaknesses, and figure out who your competition is likely to be and how you can deal with them. Once you've done your SWOT analysis, you're ready to develop your win themes. Now, this is something, unfortunately, that not enough businesses do when they put together proposals of any kind. It is very important for you to create win themes that tell your story, that make you unique, that separate you from your competition. Those are what I call win themes. And you develop them by sitting down with your team and figuring out what your strengths are and then how to express those strengths most effectively in your proposal. Unfortunately, uh, a lot of companies do win themes that are not very attractive or effective. They say, well, we're experienced, or we've had many government contracts. Well, that may be true, but your competitors will be saying the same thing. So it's very important for you to develop unique win themes that make you stand out from the crowd. Once you've done that, you're ready to hold a kickoff meeting. So please, next slide, that is step six. In your kickoff meeting, you're going to present your team with a schedule and a calendar of the whole proposal development process that includes milestones and deliverables and very important dates that you all need to know about. You also should present them with a detailed outline of the entire proposal. You will give your assignments to your team. You will discuss your win themes so that everyone understands them. And you will identify the resources that the team can draw on in order to do the proposal. This is really important. A good kickoff meeting helps the team understand that this is going to be a collective effort and that it's going to be one that is coordinated. You need a proposal manager in order to run your proposal. You can't do a proposal collectively. You have to have someone who is leading the effort. And so the proposal manager is the person who usually runs the kickoff meeting and then manages the development of the proposal. So all of that should come out of step six, your kickoff meeting. Next slide, please. In step seven, you have to go through the proposal life cycle in your own proposal. You need to write the sections, put in your graphics, that is your pictures, your charts, whatever visual evidence you're going to provide, and put together a budget. If you have the time, 
you should do a pink team review. And in the pink team review, you look at an early draft of the proposal and figure out what is missing, what is there, and uh, what additional resources you may need in order to complete the proposal. After the pink proposal, you continue to develop it. And then when you have a complete first draft done, you are ready for a red team review. The red team review is really important because it will provide you with very detailed track changes and comments so that you can figure out how to make your proposal as competitive as possible. You should choose early in the process your red team and pink team reviewers. They should be people who are not involved in the proposal, but who know the subject matter. And they should be people who have read the guidelines and are willing to put in the time and effort it takes to do a good review, because this is a very time-consuming process. Once you've uh, done your red team review, you are ready for the post-red team revision of your proposal, and you are also putting together everything else that's connected with the proposal, your appendices, your resumes, whatever is also required. After you've done that, you are ready for your gold and white glove reviews. And these are your final reviews. And they will enable you to finish your proposal and make sure that it is clean and correct, complete and compliant, and free of errors and typos and things like that. Next slide, please. Step eight is something that is often neglected until the last minute. And I think that is very unfortunate because I have found that often the appendices are obnoxious to do and they take up a large amount of time. You don't want to be doing them at the end because that should be devoted to improving your narrative. So as part of your proposal calendar, you need to ensure that you have done your forms, your appendices, your resumes, your bio sketches, the budget that needs to be done so that you can concentrate on your narrative. Keep in mind that while you're doing all this, you have already registered on grants.gov, which is the portal for most electronic submissions in the federal government, or you're registered on the agency's special portal. You should do that early because sometimes it takes several days to register, and sometimes it takes a little work to figure out how to use the portal correctly. Next slide, please. Once you've done that, you're ready to produce your proposal and then submit it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, every proposal has a deadline. You should not wait until the last minute to submit your proposal because sometimes there are glitches and problems. So if your proposal is due at two o'clock, you should not be uploading it at one. You should be uploading everything at 9 a.m. to make sure that you're able to do everything correctly. Once you've submitted your proposal and you breathed a sigh of relief and slumped in your chair, you're ready for step 11, 
which is to create an electronic record of the proposal process. This can be done on your SharePoint site if you had, have one, or it can be done on a CD, but somewhere you need an electronic record of your proposal process. Next slide, please. Proposals, I like to stress to my clients, are knowledge-based sales documents. You have to demonstrate that you know the subject well, understand the agency's mission, and are likely to carry out your project successfully. By using the process that I've described, I think you're more likely to prove those things to your federal agency. In addition, I would like to stress that informational design is very important. Reviewers no longer want to read a document that's clotted with text. They expect to see good informational design, lots of white space, subheadings, chapter headings, bold, pictures, graphs, charts, and all sorts of other visuals that you may come up with. These are not just eye candy. We know, <clears throat> excuse me, that when you have good informational design, you make it easier for reviewers to understand what you have done and make it more persuasive and convincing. So I strongly recommend that you make your proposals according to the criteria of good informational design so that they are easy to read, they're inviting to read, and they are persuasive to read. I also would recommend that win or lose, you need to get reviewers' comments from the government agency. Most government agencies will give you copies of the reviewers' comments. They are very valuable. They will help you understand how the reviewers saw your proposal. And if you won, you can still improve your next proposal using these reviewers' comments. And if you've lost, you can use those reviewers' comments to revise and resubmit. Very often, it takes a couple of times to get a good proposal approved. Keep in mind that only about 10% of federal grants are approved by agencies. So the odds are against you. It's very hard to get a federal grant or a federal contract. There's lots of competition, but I am confident that if you use this process, eventually you will learn to do your proposals well and you will stand a good chance of getting a government contract. So with that, I'd like to conclude and say that if you have any questions, you're welcome to call me or email me and I'll be glad to answer them. And now I'll turn it back to Jennifer. Great. Thanks, Jamie. Good information. And thanks, everybody, for joining us. If you do have questions about grants uh, or developing grant proposals, please contact Jamie. His contact information is there. And we look forward to seeing everybody next time. Uh, you can find our webinar schedule on our website under the webinar section. And all the recordings are there as well. Thanks, everyone.